Growth hacking is the rather new term in marketing focused on business growth. Basically, there is no concrete strategy. It's all about figuring out what's working for you and what's not. Over the years, I saw a lot of posts about different creatives in Toronto on Blogto, which is our local uh, Toronto-based uh, blog that has hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So of course, I always wanted to be part of that crowd. I wanted to be Blockto famous. I tried doing what basically every photographer in Toronto is doing, is basically posting nice photos of Toronto and tagging Blockto for a chance of them noticing you and sharing your photos to get your portion of exposure. With my countless tries, I was able to get some attention from Blockto. They posted about me on their Twitter. But to be honest, it was really insignificant amount of exposure and I didn't really get many followers from that post. After more research of their blog, I realized that I need to build more than just a couple of photos uh, on my Instagram account in order to get noticed. One day I found a massive library of old photos of Toronto and decided to create a collection of photo uh, of before and afters of how the city looked 10, 20 and 50 years ago and how it looks now and show to locals how their city changed over the years. What's really important here is that I called this collection Old New Toe and created a hashtag Old New Toe that people could follow those posts on social media. You might not think that this is a big deal, but interlinking on social media can have a huge boost on your visibility. But it's not just that, it's also building brand behind that collection of photos. It's pretty much what Apple is doing by calling their high definition screens retina screens. Something that has a cool sounding and a catchy name is always better than just a generic thing. Of course, it doesn't mean that by just naming something, it's going to make it big. You have to work for it. I knew that it needed to be a somewhat sizable collection of photos because people don't like subscribing to accounts that are empty, both in terms of followers and posts. So after I've shot, edited and posted a bunch of photos, I started to generating some attention to this collection. I went on a bunch of local Facebook groups and started sharing my photos and saying, hey guys, I went to your area, I found this old photo of this and that, and then I took him another photo and I tried to match it as close as possible and here's what it looks like. And that was very personal, those people, because they were seeing those architectural objects uh, almost every day on their way to work or school, etc. And I just showed them how cool those places looked 50 or so years ago. Those people really appreciated that. I got a lot of great feedback as well as some followers from those groups. After that, I went ahead on Reddit and shared my story on uh, a Toronto subreddit. To be honest, I was surprised I didn't get as much attention as I was hoping for, but I still got quite a lot of followers from there. Then I went to photography subreddit and share my story about how I had a creative blog that I didn't have any passion for photography for quite some time. And then I found that old collection of photos. And then, then I was really inspired to, to find those places in, in real world and then try to match them as close as possible and share with people. And that story resonated with a lot of photographers and a lot of creatives who oftentimes have those creative blogs. When I shared my story to photography subreddit, that was one of the most liked posts on that subreddit in a long time. And then I decided it's time to help Blockto uh, discover the stories. So I went ahead on their website, I found a contact form and I just tipped them as a, some random Torontonian. And they said, hey, you know what? I was on a photography subreddit. I found this guy who's from our city and he is building this collection of photos, etc. blah, blah, blah. There's quite a lot of hype on the subreddit, blah, blah, blah. And then I just sent them that email. To be honest, I was very surprised because the very next morning I received a message on my Instagram from one of the journalists from Blockto, just to have a short interview and tell a little bit about myself, about the story, about what I'm doing, etc. In about a week, that post shows up on their website, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms. That day, I was refreshing my Instagram every couple of minutes, and every time I did that, I would get extra five to 10 followers. In the next 48 hours, I received almost 1,500 new followers to my account, which was quite a lot, to be honest, because my account had 2,000 followers at the moment. Do I feel bad that I tricked them? Well, no, because in my opinion, it's a win-win situation. They needed a content to generate clicks and views on their website, and I needed some extra exposure. And so it's a win-win. We both got what we wanted. So why am I sharing this story with you, you might ask? Well, just to show you that you can generate quite a lot of attention and exposure to your business, to you as a professional, etc. The best part about all this is that it was done completely for free. Of course, I had to spend some time to build that content, to generate some ideas, put it all together. But it just shows you that your hustle and your creativity can go a long way and you don't have to spend a fortune to promote yourself or your business. As a matter of fact, I contacted Block to, to ask them how much it would cost to promote my business on their platform. And that was thousands of dollars for social media posts, 
Instagram videos, etc. And honestly, a lot of times a paid ad might not have such a good result as an organic uh, promotion. All right, that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you have a couple of tricks like that up your sleeve, it would be awesome if you share that in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the future videos.